Welcome to the first lesson. In this one, we are going to create a three-dimensional sphere, change its color, change the color of the background of the scene, and start moving the sphere around with our mouse. Then, we are also going to talk about how the color is represented in OpenGL inside Max. In this lesson, we are going to use the patches Lesson 1 and Lesson 1 sliders. So, the first thing that we need is the JIT world object. The role of this object is to draw our scene, and also to open the window in which the scene is drawn. JIT world is the Max 7 evolution of two objects that in Max 6 were responsible for the drawing of the scene. These two objects are JIT GL render and JIT window, and they are still available inside Max 7. But now they have been melted inside one single object, JIT World, that is responsible both for the rendering of the scene and for the opening of the window. If you are still using Max 6, there is a video appendix in this course that will show you how to replace the JIT World object with the JIT GL render and the JIT window. The first argument to the JIT World object is the name of our context, and we can choose every name that we want. I just picked the name sphere because in this lesson we are drawing a sphere, but you can really choose whatever word. We can think about the context as the place where we are placing all our OpenGL objects in order to have them displayed in our window or simply activated. We can also have different contexts and so different windows in the same patch, but for the moment let's just stick with one context. As you can see, when we are clicking on some parts of the patch outside of our window, the window disappears behind the patch. In order to make the window stay always on top of the patch, we can give the JIT world object the attribute floating1. If we do that, the window will be always on top of the patch, no matter where we click. Let's now create a toggle object and connect it to the JIT world object in order to start the drawing of our scene. When we click on the toggle, you'll see that the color of the window will change from black to a really dark gray. This is the default color that the JIT world object uses to fill the background of our window. Let's change this default color to a color of our choice. In order to do this, we need to give the JIT world object the erase color attribute, which takes four floating point numbers. These numbers represent the red, green, blue, and alpha value of the color of the background, and they range from 0 to 1. Let's make the background color something like a water blue. So we don't want any red, just a bit of green, and a lot of blue. The alpha is set to 1 for the moment. We will talk about the alpha value later. When we modify the JIT word object, the window gets repositioned in the default position. And also, we need to restart the object by clicking again on the toggle. The background color of the window is now the watery blue that we choose. Now's the time to create our sphere. We will do this by creating a JITGL grid shape object, which is a container for several three-dimensional shapes. The argument for this object is the name of the context. If we give it the same name of our context, the shape object will be drawn inside our window. When we finish creating the grid shape object, we see that some kind of flat circle appears inside the window. Let's scale the object down to have a clearer idea of what is being drawn. To do this, let's use the scale attribute of the grid shape object, which takes a value for each of the three dimensions, x, y, and z. Let's make it half of its original size by typing 0.5 for all the three values. Now it's clearer that what is being drawn is like a flat circle. Let's make it look like the sphere that it really is by using the light. In order to enable the lighting for this shape, we need to give a value of 1 to the lighting enable attribute of the grid shape object. Now we can see that the object is really three-dimensional and it looks like the polygonal approximation of a sphere. Now let's move our sphere in our three-dimensional virtual world using our mouse. In order to do this, we have to create the JITGL handle object and give it the same name of our context. Then we attach this object to our grid shape object. Now the handle object is controlling the position and rotation of our shape. To move the sphere, let's click on it inside our window. By keeping the command key pressed and dragging with the mouse, we can move the sphere on the XY plane. By keeping the ALT key pressed and dragging the mouse, we can move the sphere on the Z axis. 
To rotate it, just click on it with the mouse and then drag the mouse. At this point, you have maybe noticed something. The borders of our shape are a bit like jagged, not so smooth. In order to correct this, let's activate the anti-aliasing. We can do this by setting the FSAA attribute of the JITWORD object to 1. Now it looks a bit better. Ok, now we are going to see different ways of drawing our sphere. Every object in the Object 3D family has this attribute called polymod that stays for polygon mode. With this attribute we can decide the way our shape is going to be rendered into the window. There are three ways to render our shapes, polygons, lines or points. This attribute takes two values, the first is for the front face and the second is for the back face. We are going to talk about the difference between front and back faces in the future. Let's create a radio group object with a size of 3 that will give us the number from 0 to 2, which are exactly the values that we can give to the polymod attribute. The polygon mode 0, 0 is the default one, so let's try polygon mode 1, 1. You see that our object now is being represented by lines. These lines are the edges of the polygons that were representing the sphere. See the intersection between those lines? These are called vertices. A vertex is just a point defined in a three-dimensional space, so it's composed by three values an X value, an Y value and a Z value. A JITGL grid shape object is a collection of these vertices stored in a two-dimensional matrix. But for the moment don't worry about that, we are going to see this in future videos. Let's see now how Polygon Mod 2.2 looks like. It draws the vertices as points, so just one point in the location of every vertex. By default these points are a bit small. Let's use the point size attribute of the grid shape object and set it to something like 3, so the points are a bit bigger. So, summarizing, polygon mode 2 for the points, 1 for the lines, and 0 for the polygons. Having this grey shape is a bit boring, let's change the color of it. To do this, we have to use the color attribute of the grid shape object. Let's give it some values. As we saw, the first three numbers are the red, green and blue values for the color while the fourth one is the alpha channel, so the transparency, which for the moment is not activated. So let's just give this fourth number a value of 1. Let's notice that the colors also affects the line color and the points color, so every polygon mode that we choose. By default, the dimensions of the matrix in which the vertices are stored are 20 by 20, so a total of 400 vertices. For the moment, don't worry about the matrix of the JITGL grid shape object. We are going to see these in future videos. We can change the dimensions of this matrix and so the number of vertices with the dim attribute of the grid shape object. Let's now give our object 2500 vertices by changing the dimensions to 50 by 50. The sphere now looks a lot smoother. Using different polygon modes, you can now see that we have a lot more vertices. But keep in mind that adding a lot of vertices may slow down the performance of your patch. You usually don't need to have that many. Let's now introduce a new attribute. It's called smooth shading. And what it does is to interpolate the values of the lighting calculation for each vertex. Without smooth shading, every polygon that forms the shape has just one color. With smooth shading enabled, this color is interpolated across the whole surface of every polygon. Now our shape looks really like a proper sphere. Let's now take a look at the Lesson 1 Sliders Max Path. So we already introduced colors inside OpenGL, but let me explain this a little further. When working with video and images inside Max, the color format is alpha, red, green and blue. While when working in OpenGL, the alpha is the fourth component, so red, green, blue and alpha. The red, green and blue are additive primary colors, and the type of synthesis that we are doing here is called additive color synthesis. That is, summing those three primary colors to get a lot of other different colors. When all the three colors are maxed out to the value 1, we get white. When they are all zeroed, we get black. 
In between those extremes, we get all the different shades of colors. Let's notice that when working with video and images, we often work with a color type of char, so 256 shades of color. When working with OpenGL colors though, we mostly use Float32 precision, which adds really a greater amount of shades, and the range is from 0 to 1 floating point. All the GL objects use by default the Float32 precision type. 